Hello, Gemma. Hello. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? It's really good to have you with us. And today we um, have uh, Dr. Gemma Modinus, who is a reader in the MRC Centre for Neurodevelopmental Disorders. And her work concentrates on translational neuroscience and psychopathology. Um, she's also a group leader and a Wellcome Trust Sir Henry Dale Fellow. So welcome, Gemma. It's, um, I'm so pleased to have you with us today. And um, just to say a couple of words about why we're here. So this is an interview for NeuroAgenda. And NeuroAgenda is uh, an initiative that um, we are using to help celebrate International Women's Day and um, a way, as a way to celebrate and explore the journeys and experiences of our amazing um, women uh, members of the MRC and the Centre for Developmental Neurobiology, so um, of which you are one of them. So we're delighted to have you with us today. Um, so if it's okay, I will kick off with um, a couple of questions for you. And um, I was wondering if you would start by explaining a little bit about your journey to um, to this point, so going back in time to your school days, what inspired you in science um, and to where you are today? Great, thank you. So thank you for um, inviting me to have this interview. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, so back to the school days, that's a <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> so um, what inspired me to, or interested me in, in psychosis research was that my great grandmother, she, we, we lived together, um, you know, Spain, um, and, and she had a dementing process towards the end of her life. She died when I was eight and her personality changed a bit. And she had been so lovely to me. And, and you know, we used to spend a long time together. Mm -hmm. And then she just, um, she had some psychosis uh, as part of the dementia mm -hmm. and that change to me, I, it was, I just couldn't understand what was going on there. Mm. And she was quite paranoid about my, who I was and, and a bit jealous. So I think I had that in my mind. And when I was in high school, I was quite of a snob. Um, I was uh, reading everything, I was writing. I, I chose pure humanities. Um, I thought science was too reductionist and, and simplistic and I, I actually looked down on it. <laughs> and uh, and then so I wanted to do psychology to study the human mind and and then it was during the psychology degree that as soon as we had subjects that were more to do with, you know neurobiology psychology um, neurophysiology I felt a, an absolute kind of pull towards it mm. and and I realized that's all I wanted to learn about. So when I finished psychology, I did a master's degree in applied neuroscience in Barcelona, but at the same time I was working in an Alzheimer's disease clinic as a clinical neuropsychologist. And, uh, and then when I finished that, I gave a talk in Italy with no translation. So I was kind of like uh, the brain and uh, old people. And this was a Dutch professor who saw me, had to go through the same experience and asked me for my CV. Two weeks later, I had a, a, an offer of a fully funded PhD position to use brain imaging in relation to psychotic-like experiences. So I quit everything, moved alone to Groningen in the Netherlands, did a PhD in neuroscience, and then I moved to the IOPPN as a postdoc, did a couple of postdoc, got my first funding as PI with the NARSAT Young Investigator Award. And then I got a King's Prize Fellowship to transition to independence shortly after the Sir Henry Dale, and then I started my own lab. So that's pretty much, that was 2017. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jen. That's, I mean, that's an amazing journey. And I, I think it's really um, interesting how you initially felt about humanities and science and how that, how that worked out. So yeah, that's, that's amazing. So um, what can you tell us, Gemma, about your position now at King's? What is what do you do um, in your job and, and what does your average day look like? Yeah, so um, in the lab, we are about 10 people now. So there's four PhD students, a postdoc, and then um, because of the nature of the studies that we do, uh, some uh, so, uh, honorary clinical um, researchers that help with the medical supervision of the studies. Mm. So um, 
mainly the focus of the lab is on the neural systems involved in emotional processing and emotional behavior and the role that these uh, neural mechanisms can play in the development of psychotic symptoms or psycho psychotic disorders like schizophrenia. And what we use is uh, cross-species translational imaging methods. So, you know, we, could, we can use the same imaging um, methodology in an animal model of psychosis and in our patients. And so we can try and understand better the uh, underpinnings of the neuroimaging observations in the patients. Um, because in the animals, we, you can then do more invasive manipulations uh, to follow this up. So in a normal day to day, I mean, the lab is people sitting in their desks. We don't have microscopes or because we depend on MRI or PET MR scanners. So we depend from these facilities and then from the preclinical imaging um, facilities also at the IOPBN. Amazing. So 10 people in your lab, Gemma, that's, that's a substantial. So do you have PhD students in your lab? Um, and, do, and also, do you have, do you engage in any teaching at King's? Yes, yeah, so in the lab, there's, uh, I'm first supervisor of four PhD students, mm -hmm. and there's also two master's degree students that are doing their dissertations with us, mm -hmm. and a postdoc with the Newton International Fellowship from the Academy of Medical Sciences. Wow. Um, and so I do uh, also have a role in teaching leadership and education leadership. I'm the module leader of the um, biological psychiatry module of the MSc in psychiatric research. Mm. And, um, and then I also give occasional lectures and workshops in different MSCs from, from the department. Mm. Yeah, amazing. So do you think that, um, I'm just thinking that's, that's a no lovely little team you have, but do you think the, uh, a mentorship role is, is an important part of the development of PhD students and having a, a good mentor? Do you think that's an yeah, important role? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in, in, it is the part that I enjoy the most of my job, really. Um, there's other things that I enjoy, obviously, but mentoring and training students, I find yeah. it extremely re rewarding mm -hmm. because it's, you know, it's a direct impact of my expertise and my knowledge on people. Yeah. And so, and it obviously goes beyond teaching you how to analyze something. So I, I try to be um, a mentor as well as a supervisor and make sure that they, you know, that people are prepared for life as an academic if they cho choose to go that, that way um, and being honest about attracting funding and, and the publishing system and, and our bigger role in society that we can have with collaborations with artists or with engaging in science policy and advice and all these kind of things. I really enjoy that. Yeah, sure. Because, uh, yeah, I think it's a really good point. And also, you know, how how broad a person it is uh, advantageous to be as a scientist as well. And, and that it isn't just about, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, being in the lab and doing experiments, you know, so it's a whole, it's a whole sort of package that, um, that has to be explored. So, so what, uh, you've kind of answered my question, Gemma, but what is, what do you like most about your job? Yeah, so it's that, it really yeah. is. I think that's been the biggest sort of uh, reward from mm. becoming independent and starting my own lab. The mm. fact that um, there's these people that have wanted to come and work with me and that, you know, we can, I can train them, I can mentor them, I can try and support and nurture them for, for the future. Um, and the exchange that we have, of course, it's different points of view. Um, otherwise, you you know, we would only get that far if it's just me thinking about things. Yeah. So um, I find that really rewarding. I also really like in preparation of grants, for example, for grant applications, I really like the brainstorming with different people. So the research that I do, um, you know, the preclinical side of things, for example, I, this was only incorporated in the Henry Dale in 2017. So this is a whole new discipline, so to say, that before I found that people who work with uh, animals work with animals and people who work with humans work with humans, we cite each other, but we don't really, it's because it's difficult to kind of do something cross-species. Cross so I really enjoy that a lot, um, the brainstorming with the statisticians, with the preclinical, with the clinical people, with the, you know, I, that's, that's something I really like. Yeah, sure. And just that, those kind of soft skills of being able to communicate 
are so key in so many ways for, for kind of those kind of collaborations and so on. So Gemma, what would you say um, are, uh, or is, if, are there any challenging parts or what is the most challenging part about um, your journey to where you've got to now and about your job in general, would you say? Mm. Yeah, so there have been challenges mm -hmm. uh, along the way, some bigger than others. Um, some of them have had to do with the fact that I'm a woman in science. So I think it's important in the context of neuroagenda to talk about it. Um, I'm, I don't, I'm not prepared to go into detail to some of them, but there's been um, issues I've encountered that are to do with uh, being a woman in science. Mm -hmm. And then see all the big challenges are things like a global pandemic where you know it's uh, <laughs> yeah. completely out of your control and i think that's something hard as a as a scientist you know you try so hard to control you know to make your experiments controlled and to and to plan things and to forecast things and then something unpredictable happens especially obviously there's a pandemic but it happens when you collaborate you know the studies that are really multidisciplinary you depend it's lots of people involved um, understanding that things unpredictable things can come up and having that flexibility that's something that's been a big learning experience for me um, especially as I transition to independence as well mm, yes absolutely um, so you mentioned um, about being a woman in science do you think uh, or what kind of positive actions do you feel could be taken to increase for example, female, female representation at senior levels in science? Yeah, so obviously this is a, it's, it's not a single unidimensional mm. issue or course that leads to um, women still being kind of underrepresented in senior positions. And, and I think, you know, there's so many aspects to, to play with this and if, at, at the level of, you know, institutional levels, there need to be changes in, in the way people are evaluated, for example, rewards and recognitions, mm. tenure tracks, um, who is more likely to be put on research contracts or academic contracts. Mm. Um, there's you know, still a lot of work institutionally to come from there to, towards equality. Um, there's also unconscious biases that um, everyone has, and it's important to be aware of them. So this kind of um, awareness and, tra and training in these issues is important. Yeah, so I, I think something that's also very important is to have allies and allies, I don't mean just, you know, peers at the same level, but also especially allies in positions of seniority, who and men and, and, and women who are able to be aware of, of any issues and, and, and give support. So um, that's also something that I think is very important to bring awareness to. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and I agree. And one thing from doing these interviews and from your agenda is that it's not a single um, fix that's going to be, um, you know, that's going to make the difference, but it's a concerted kind of effect of a network effect of how things go forward from here uh, for women in science. So, um, OK, Gemma, I, uh, that's that's all the questions I have for you for the moment. So. I will let you go and I will say thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing your insights and your journey and um, some of your perspectives. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Bye.